committee will come to order. This morning we'll begin a review of the failure and government rescue of the world's most celebrated hedge fund, Long-Term Capital. Our final panel uh, is composed uh, of Mr. David S. Reuter, who's professor of law at Northwestern University School of Law and former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission and the father of my godson. Uh, Ms. Muriel Siebert, who's president and CEO of Siebert Financial Corporation. Mr. Henry Liu, who, who's professor at law at the University of Texas. Mr. Brad Ziff, who's principal of the Arthur Anderson and Company. Uh, Mr. Stephen Axelrod, who's a global economic consultant. Mr. Stephen Lonsdorf, who's president of Van Hedge Fund Advisors International and Mr. Charles J. Gradante, who's managing partner of the Hennessy Group, LLC. Uh, Mr. Gradante. I appreciate the opportunity, and um, as a taxpayer sitting here for six hours, I'm truly impressed with uh, your sense of urgency and perceptiveness uh, of the committee. Let me put my uh, testimony uh, in context. I come to you with uh, experience and extending credit as a former president of the U.S. National Bank from 1990 to 95, which were very difficult years. I have also policed the activities of proprietary traders at a large investment bank um, who, as such, manage money in a similar fashion as uh, hedge funds do. And currently, I'm president and CEO of the Hennessy Hedge Fund Advisory Group, which advises investors on hedge fund investments. We have submitted to, to committee um, our proprietary trading research, and I would be glad to answer any questions now or in the future regarding the research we've submitted. I think one of the first questions that that comes up is, um, and I'd like to ask uh, answer six of them, is, is, uh, is the fundamental concept of hedging valid? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm sure you are aware of this, but the origins of, of hedging in the United States goes back to the 18th century in the agricultural industry. Farmers were the first hedgers by selling crops or cattle yet to be harvested at a future price for delivery. In doing so, they locked in the price today and were not exposed to future market fluctuations. In essence, they hedged their market exposure for a period of time it took for them to harvest their product for delivery. Hedging, therefore, um, has been around for a long time, uh, which in and of itself validates its presence in the marketplace, and we believe it will become more and not less important as the markets uh, increase in size and volatility. In fact, I believe that someday it will be considered imprudent for an investor not to hedge some element of market risk, risk just as it is imprudent today for a farmer not to hedge price fluctuations for his products. Question number two, have hedge funds collectively grown so large and their, their positions so adventurous that they have uh, uh, rather, uh, you know, adding to risk rather than mitigating systemic risk? Research we have provided the committee indicates that the vast majority of hedge fund managers have less than 500 million in assets in the, on the management. Actually, 80% of the managers um, have fi less than 500 million. And gross market exposure, that's long positions plus short positions for the industry uh, in January 97, according to our research, was 128%. Um, and in January 1998, 132%. Now, this gross exposure includes so-called macro managers, but does not include their bond, um, uh, levered bond portfolios, nor their derivative exposure. 90% of hedge funds do not use large amounts of marginal le or leverage, and usually most of them are well within Reg T limits. Looking at our research, one would conclude that macro managers and managers like long-term capital are a segment of the industry. However, they, are, they do not fairly represent the majority of hedge funds. Clearly, we need to avoid what appears to be the unavoidable, and that is gross generalizations about the industry based on media attention and long-term capital debacle. By several key measures of control, namely 13D filings, amount of capital relative to the U.S. bond and equity markets, hedge fund managers are less of a force than mutual funds and institutional money managers. What seems to be apparent is that their relevance to the major market moves is more about their influence than their size or venturous positions. 
Most, profession, most professionals regard it naive to think that information never goes beyond the sales or credit desks of hedge fund counterparties. Consequently, hedge funds can indirectly influence the investments of professional money managers that have far greater financial clout in the marketplace. If we were to criticize hedge funds for anything, or the majority of hedge funds for anything, it would be for their influence, not their financial presence, except as in the case of long-term capital, which I believe, as others, is an isolated case in terms of systemic risk. Third question, do hedge funds present systemic risk to U.S. markets or non-U.S. markets? Um, hedge funds have recognized early rumblings uh, in the marketplace before they, they surface. An example of this was the ERM crisis in 1992, where hedge funds shorted sterling and Italian lira. Hedge funds by far were not the only players, nor did they create the market conditions that they capitalized on. The inertia was already in motion. Furthermore, mutual funds, pension funds, and insurance companies from all over the G7 were involved. At that time, G7 institutional capital under management was estimated at $10 trillion versus macro managers $12 billion. It is virtually impossible for me to comment on the potential systemic risk associated with long-term capital, but one does seem, but something does seem clear to me, and that is the key issue is risk management on the part of both long-term capital and its bankers, uh, not the concept of hedge funds. We may need to tighten margin requirements, as Ms. Siebert suggests, and on, especially on certain levered bond arbitrage trading strategies, trading strategies. I do believe, however, that the present system of control for systemic risk is fundamentally adequate. Lenders have to know their credit, and if they cannot, they should not lend. Leverage inherently is not bad, as Chairman Greenspan indicated this morning. In fact, banks, as we know, are levered 20 to 1. It is the relationship of leverage to the volatility of the trade that is the risk and that can be difficult to measure because historical statistical relationships may not adequately define one-off events such as credit spreads widening and the Russian debacle as we've seen in the last uh, month. There, and I apologize. We, we have a vote on the floor. And uh, uh, first, uh, procedurally, let me ask, uh, indicate a unanimous consent request to place a statement of Eugene T. Rothberg in, Rothberg in the record. Uh, second, let me apologize that I'm told this vote is shortly to be followed by a series of votes. And I think it would probably be better to bring this panel to a close without uh, the questions being asked. But let me thank all of you.